Then he whispers to uh, Marcel, yeah, she um, she gonna be the next basically baby mother. She gonna this this gonna make the sex baby right here. I'm like, you know what, you freak ass nigga, you just gonna fuck any everything. And, so, and the bitch, even when she he was like, can I take him? She all. I said, you know what? Do you know who this nigga is? Do you know that Ariane is a homegirl? And then on top of that, Ariane, do you see this shit? Do you see how this nigga is a whole whore? Like he is a whole whore, girl. And you need to leave this ass alone, girl. Did he do too fucking much, girl? And don't you got that baby on or little boy on top of that, girl? You need to make sure that your son don't see this type of shit because his daddy is a whole whore. Girl, they're on, you know, couples retreat trying to get their marriage together because basically, okay, they had an open relationship and yeah, she started liking the bitch and started not to even want to be with this motherfucker. And I'm like, damn, this is exactly what could possibly happen. You know, then on top of that, I just couldn't see my husband, you know, fucking somebody else. Like that is just, I, that is mind blowing to me, y'all. And it's mind blowing to him. Well, at least that's what he say. You know, niggas be saying this shit. We're trying to agree with you and shit. I ain't no stupid bitch. He probably be with it. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, honey, I'm not doing no shit like that. You know, I, I can't take it. I've been to beat a bitch in the head with the fucking lamp. You know what I'm saying? I've been to snatch the bitch up by her feet and try to toss the bitch across. But you're not gonna be fucking my husband. And I don't want you touching me, bitch. Like I I don't see how people do it, and that's just a bit much, and I just don't see it. You know what I'm saying? But this is Lewis and Tiffany's um reality, and that's a lie, you know what I'm saying? But I would really like to know, you know, how is how does it go? So Marcel, y'all, I was a little nervous because bitch, you was doing a little bit too much, you know what I'm saying? He was like asking the lady, you know, Melinda, honey, okay? He was asking her, um, what do you say your name was again? Lena and all I said, oh, okay. So then she was like, oh, Melinda, you know, and he was like, oh, okay. Um, and then start asking her, where is she from? You know, now it looked like he was trying to make small talk. You don't need to be asking her again. Cause obviously, what did you say your name was? You already asked her a question when y'all was in conversation before, you know what I'm saying? So you went back and so Melinda, honey, thinks that she has a chance. Yeah, she, she was still standing there after it looked like he wasn't even talking to her anymore. You know, and I peeped that. He was um, asking her, you know, well, where are you from? Well, she said where she was from. They did a little, you know, kiki about that. And there was other women, you know, around them that was in past. And he was like, and so where are you from? Like, basically trying to get the bitch out of his face. And she's still standing there, you know what I'm saying? Looking desperate. And, like, she was trying to get something else from him. And he was not paying no attention to her, you know what I'm saying? So I guess he was just making small talk or whatever. But it seemed like to me he was trying to pull the bitch in. And I guess that's how she felt. Now, bitch, on top of that... I know you know what show this is, and this nigga is Murray. So why are you still standing there as if you need something else from this man? You should have just walked off after y'all had a little small talk. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody else, but you still standing there. You know, it's always a couple, honey, that's going to fuck a Murray man. Like, so, you know, that right there, that situation right there was creepy to me, and I thought that, you know, on both ends, that was a little bit suspect, mainly on hers, because, bitch, you did too much. You already know this man was married for one. You have to know who Marceau is. There's no way that you don't know that he's been. I think all of these ladies know that they was married. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? And to be pushing up on them was too much, but they was giving it up, y'all. When the men came in, they was sitting there. Everybody was looking all pretty. Everybody had their best on, and they was sitting there, and they was like, oh, hi. Oh, sights that men came in the room. I said, ooh, y'all. Y'all know these men are murdering. They is doing it up there. I don't know whether Carlos King told them to put on shows for this shit. But, yeah, they was giving it up like they was ready and, yeah, primed to go, honey. Okay? That's the way it looked to me. But anyway, Marceau makes the comment, you know, um, you know, the ladies going to eat. What they going to um, make the plates? You know, and I'm just like, okay, girl. Somebody was like, don't do that. Or something like, you know, they made the comment, bitch, you tripping. You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Was that was that triggering? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, well, you knew exactly what the fuck he was doing. But at the same time, you know, so has this, like, thought process um, of, like, uh, male chauvinist. So I think he, you know, thought that a woman should make his play, honey. Um, excuse me. Tisha is not here, honey. So yeah, um, you just need to go ahead and make your own shit because ain't no bitch gonna be trying to make your play knowing that you married. And possibly Tisha could be watching this and see a bitch making your play. And on top, it doesn't even fucking matter. Why should I make your play? I don't even fucking know you. You know what I'm saying? So that part right there was stupid. And I think he was just fucking with them. But for real, for real, if a bitch gonna make my play, make my play. You know, that's how Marcel thought. So I thought that was funny. Y'all know I think Marcel was comical and a lot of shit he said be funny to me. So I thought that was funny. But yeah, 
Um, he tried it a little bit. That was a bit of a reach. So everybody's sitting at the table, honey. And yeah, they just trying to, um, you know, gather a pitch or like some type of sale to sell, you know, Marcel's new wine, Martel's new wine. And um, I noticed that Miss Melinda is sitting next to Marcel. And I'm like, oh, okay. So did she make her way to him or did he make his way to her? You know what I'm saying? I think she made her way to him. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that Marcel would be that stupid to be trying to sit by the bitch. You know what I'm saying? But I think this bitch is that thirsty to want to try to sit by him. You know what I'm saying? It's always one. It's always going to be one, honey, and they don't give a fuck. You hear me? Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Sassy Sean Teeth. I'm coming back with another video. Yes, honey. Back with another one. Girl, y'all get into this episode, okay? I think it's the 13th or 14th episode, y'all. I don't know how long this season going to be, but this is long, you know, and it seems like nobody is talking about a end to this, like, show in, at any time, and I'm just wanting it to be over. I told y'all that before. Um, Murray the Medicine is about to come on. I'm going to review that. Um, I'm still reviewing Basketball Wives. Um, this one, I'm just over it, you know what I'm saying? But this episode, y'all, was really, really good. Like, I enjoyed myself to the fullest. Nobody was arguing back and forth. You know, the ladies, it wasn't no he said, she said stuff, so... I really enjoyed it and it was uplifting. You know, we got to see different things going on with um everybody. So and very eye opening. Very, very eye opening. Okay, hand hand open. Okay, honey. Y'all, so yeah, y'all. Let's just get into it, okay? So the guys are basically um on the way to Atlanta. You know, they in the little truck and um they're on the way to Atlanta and they get there at the home. Now, Martel rented a two million dollar house out and it is gorge, okay? It is really, really pretty. Um, I don't know if it should have been in a house, you know what I'm saying? To meet, you know, all of the ladies, because when they got there, it was 10 to 12 bitches there, and I was so afraid for them, y'all. I was like, oh my God. I just, I, I was nervous for them, because I don't want anybody to get in trouble, you know what I mean? But the house was gorgeous. Um, the women, they look nice, you know? Um, it just, it was an eerie feeling, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, they arrived. Um, but before this, before the girls come... Um, because they didn't even know all these bitches was going to be. I just thought that it should be somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? It could have been held somewhere else other than a house, you know, for somebody to be able to go right in a room. Okay. But anyway, y'all, um, the guys called before all of that, um, the girls aren't there yet. Um, the guys called, you know, their wives and everything and just trying to reassure them that they're grown, they're married, nothing is going to go on and they're in control of their sales. So I was glad that's what you would want your husband to do to call you when he got there, girl. Just to say, hey, I made it, bitch. I ain't down on the way. Um, yeah, I'm an actor called me. And just reassure you that, you know, everything was going to be okay now. If this was my husband, I just would suggest that he do not go. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that Martel and his situations, you never know how it's going to go. And I just wouldn't want my husband to go. But if he wanted to go, you know, and he insisted, I would have just had to, you know, act accordingly and allow him to go because you can't stop a grown person from going nowhere. And this is the case with um, Marcel and Tisha. I'm sure she did not want him to go, but he went along anyway, and she trusted he's going to do the right thing. And for the most part, it looked like everybody was good. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, y'all, they walk into the house, okay? And it's 10 to 12 bitches sitting there. Like I said, about 10 to 12 bitches. And I'm just like, ooh, this don't look good. You understand? And Marcel, he's not even giving a he like yeah um he loves women and yeah it's mostly women here and that's on them they got to go back to their wives and let you know deal with that on on their end like he not involved in that i'm like damn like you gonna throw them in the fire and then when they get all burnt up you just gonna be like oh yeah i ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with that that y'all burnt y'all out you know what i'm saying y'all jumped in the goddamn fire that wasn't on me maurice is like you know i know we're gonna get in trouble for this you know what i'm saying and i know somebody who's gonna tell and it's gonna be martel i'm like oh yeah and basically, yeah, that's what Martell be doing. Just like how you told Lewis and Tiffany business job, we're going to get into it. So anyway, um, one female, she has a pink outfit on. I think she was cute. She was a little bit older to be wearing that type of shit. I was like, bitch, like, damn. I hope I don't be looking like that. Like, oh, but like, try to look too cute, like, too revealing, y'all. I hope I don't look like that. Because sometimes I be liking certain shit, and I be like, am I too old? And I be asking my kid, they be like, no, mommy, you look fine. Or my son's girl would be like, oh, no, you look fine. But it still be sometimes you be feeling like, you know what I'm saying? So I think this is what she looked like. She just looked too old to be rocking the shit that she had on. But the bitch had a body. You feel me? Like, she was all the way curvy. And yeah, some of the youngest ain't want that smoke because this bitch was bad. Like, she was showing her stomach and everything. You know, she looked good and I can't even be mad. But at the end of the day, like, she just looked too old for what she had on. But she made a good suggestion. She was like, you know, she feels like the bottle... <coughs> <coughs> His wine bottle needed a splash of pink, you know? 
And I thought that was an awesome suggestion because y'all know we love pink as females and anything pink, we like, ooh, I need to get it. You just feel like you need to get it because it's fucking pink. That's just how it is, y'all. That's how I am, that's how my daughter is. Like we love pink and anything that has pink on it, you just feel like you should get it because it's for you. Pink screams girl, so I thought that was epic, you know? So that was a suggestion. And they had a couple other suggestions, but I was just a little, you know, uh, bothered by the fact that Melinda was sitting there with Marcel. Okay, I was checking on her, this bitch for teaching. Like, bitch, you don't see much. Um, anyway, because we already saw you all up in his face. So at the same time, y'all, Tisha and Kimmy meet up. I think they are black. Um, and yeah, they just, you know, basically contemplating on what the guys are going to be doing, hoping that they're on their best behavior. This is what... Um, one of them is saying they hope they're on their best behavior. Um, they just gonna go to strip clubs and all that. I just hope it's just nothing, you know, like it, it's gonna make a big scandal like last time because that was just too much. And then Tisha is basically sitting there trying to convince herself and us that Marceau, um, is not gonna cheat on her and God will bring it to her if he does, you know, and it's just like, bitch. you basically still bothered about the entire situation and you're trying to convince yourself and us. And it's just not becoming, you know what I'm saying? But if you're going to adopt this personality, like, you know, um, you're not bothered by anything and, you know, you haven't been shown that your husband is cheating and everything, then maybe you should start acting like it because right now you seem like you are really fucking worried and you seem like, you know, you just going to let God um, drop it in your hands and or drop it on your lap and, yeah, then you'll deal with it. But, like, you need to have better conversation as if you are, you know, uh, uh, more positive, you know, or just don't even fucking have that conversation at all as if, you know, you're nervous and you're afraid. Just just leave it alone. I just think she needs to be less vocal about the fact that, you know, she's afraid because she just looks really afraid, you know? Don't keep speaking on stuff that hasn't happened because when that happens, you probably gonna be rocked and you need to just let it go for now. You know, it's nothing going on. Everything is in the air, but nobody has no proof. Just leave it alone. And maybe if you just stop talking and speaking about it, you know, um, things will get better or something. But at the end of the day, I just wouldn't keep speaking on it as if, you know, oh, I know that he's not doing this because, you know, um, God hasn't dropped in my lap and when he dropped, just leave it. So the guys are standing around y'all and they just talking and, you know, Marceau asks Lewis, are you okay? You good? You good, man? Just, you know, chilling. How niggas be acting, man? You good? And yeah, Marceau is like, oh yeah, he real good. And Tiffany is his wife. And Marceau was like, okay, what is that supposed to mean? And he's like, um, yeah, uh, they have an open relationship. I'm like, okay, girl. Now, open? I'm with Marceau. What does open mean? Like, what does that mean? Okay, does it mean that you, you know, have a threesome with your husband? Does that mean that um, you bring another man and Lewis is in there with, you know, a man and you and you getting your rocks off and everything done? Like, does that mean that you like women and you bring a woman in? Um, what does that mean? Does that mean you can just go off at any time and do you whenever you feel like it? Um, or he can do the same, you know, even without you. Like, what does it mean? And I really want them to get into this topic because y'all, this is so interesting to me. I reviewed Encore, y'all, a couple months back. And Ronnie, I think that's his name from New Edition. Um, his wife was on there. You know, she had, was with a singing group before. They had an open relationship. And yeah, she started liking the bitch and started not to even want to be with this motherfucker. And I'm like, damn, this is exactly what could possibly happen. It's a mystery to me. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I think that, you know, there's somebody for everybody, but I know my heart cannot take that, y'all. Like, I just could not fucking do it. And there are people who can do it, smile, love each other, and go on with their day, you know? But then there are those people who, it fucked their whole shit up, their relationship got fucking rocked. And yeah, I just don't want to find out, okay? Um, but yeah, anyway, y'all, Lewis and Tiffany are in an open relationship. So yeah, we're going to get into that later. Basically, you know, I guess as the season unfolds, I don't know how many fucking episodes we're going to get, but this is the shit that we should have known in the beginning. Like all this arguing about, you know, tick for tack, what she said, what she said, bitch, we should have been finding out this shit and finding out how does somebody be in an open relationship and what actually goes on. You know what I'm saying? Like. I just would rather been talking about this, but now we have it. It's the end, you know, and I guess we're going to revisit it, what, maybe next season or a couple, you know, episodes that we have left. But yeah, y'all, this is really um, interesting to me, and I love to see this type of stuff and try to get some type of understanding to it, y'all, because I cannot even wrap my mind around the understanding of it. I just can't. But anyway, y'all, um, oh, yeah, they did the damn thing. They show a fucking clip, okay? And I'm like, okay, Marshall, you freaky motherfucker, okay? 
um, Tiffany is sitting there with Lewis and she basically telling, you know, Martel, cause they just talking. She like, she really serious about having a baby, you know? And he like, well, you know, you want me to tell you or you want me to show you? And I'm like, okay. Um, and then Lewis was just sitting there and I'm so, you know what? I was mad that they didn't show this part and maybe this is why they were saving it. But yeah, um, I'm just like, damn, Lewis, you're not going to, Lewis looked like he wasn't tripping. He already know how this bitch go. You know, he was like, you know, that's just not for everybody. I'm like, ooh, okay, so basically he's telling you, bitch, this is my man. This is my friend. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, but she wasn't coming on to him. You know what I'm saying? But see, y'all, this is the type of shit that probably go on if you have an open marriage. You probably think everybody is, you know, ready to go with your wife. You know what I'm saying? Or you, your wife is ready to go with everybody. So, you know, this is what happens. You know, but Tiffany, she did not look like, you know, that was even on her mind. She looked like she was sitting there having a genuine conversation about how she felt. And yeah. Lewis felt some type of way, and it's because of how Martell, you know, basically acted that, yeah, he came at her like that, and that damn, Mar damn you, Martell, to come at my wife in that way, that was disrespectful now, and I'm thinking about it for him even to come like, you want me to tell you about it, or you want me to show you, like, really, there was no respect for that man, wife, and just because you didn't have no respect for your wife, you know, that doesn't mean that everybody else doesn't. And I think that that was just fucked up. Think now that I'm thinking about it, because I didn't even think about that part until night. And then for Lewis to get upset about it, you know, um, everybody don't um go like that. Everybody don't go like that. Okay, so now we know whose idea it was to be open, because you just don't seem like you all the way there with it. Okay, that's the way it seems to Lewis. And um, yeah, and then on top of that, Lewis is up there complaining that, you know, he's sexually frustrated. Bitch, how the fuck is your marriage open and you're sexually frustrated? Which one is it? Because I don't know, for me, if somebody got an open marriage, that, that to me, I'd be seeing people come in and out. That, that's what's be going on. That, you just fucking people how you want, you know what I'm saying? But that's not what it means. That's what's in my head. That's not what it means. He's saying he's not getting no pussy from his wife. And yeah, it's been, how long did he say? He just said it's been a long time because... Um, they both building the business and they brain together. So yeah. And the guy was telling him, you know, um, no, he like, it's not an issue. It's just, um, for this time. It's just for a spam, a span of time or something like that. And Martel and Marcel is like, no, if you're complaining about it, it's an issue. How are you going to say it's not when you're unhappy right now about it? So Lewis, now that he opened his fucking mouth, you know, is, is trying to like backpedal and pussy pop on the shit. And at the end of the day, bitch, you are unhappy because you're not getting no pussy. And for me personally, like Mar Marceau was saying, I would not let everybody in on my business like that. That's just not something that I would say on national TV, like, and you would never know it. You know what I'm saying? So you put it out there, Lewis, and now you trying to renege, like I said, and backpedal and pussy file on the fact that you fucking unhappy. And it is what it is. You're not going to get us to think nothing different because you trying to make it look different because now you look fucked up because you're not getting no pussy. You know, you just need to own up to the fact that, you know, you're fr sexually frustrated and Tiffany don't give a fuck. You know, and I know she don't give a fuck from the conversation with that she had with um dumbass with Melanie, and that's the thing right there. Like I, that that whole little conversation just blew me because I was like, ugh, like why are they even friends? Like they don't even look like friends. They just look like you know castmates who's trying to bring out certain um issues to make on the show to like have a person a body to talk to. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just thinking to myself. Out of all people, why would you sit up there and tell your whole personal business to this bitch Melanie? Like, that's so fucking crazy and foreign to me and out of all people. Exactly. You couldn't find nobody else to do this shit with on this show? Like, ugh. She telling her how, you know, um, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Lewis is, um, pressing her out for pussy and, you know, uh, maybe he need to find something to do and all this stuff. And like, you know, oh, she glad that Melanie went on a trip with her because, you know, he's just not there for her when it comes to that type of stuff. He's not that type of person. He don't have it in him. Um, he, she is his starter because, um, he needs to be basically revved up like he's some fucking lazy ass nigga. Like she was just dogging him out in this clip. And I was just like, you don't need to do that. And then on top of that, about your husband, y'all, I am a strong believer in not talking about your husband to other females. Like, you should not be doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? You got something. And I'm telling y'all, I don't do that shit to nobody. Can't nobody say that I talk about my husband to them because I don't. Anything I have to say to my husband, I say directly to that ass. And he already know it. So he ain't never got to worry about me talking behind his back or what he ain't, what he not doing. First of all, he ain't. 
it's not that he what he ain't and what he not doing because my husband is all of that and he does it very well okay and everything he do are uh, we all perfect no he's not so when i have a gripe i go directly to him you will never catch me venting to another bitch about my husband not in that way that was terrible it was disrespectful and it was wrong and melanie did not even like keep going with it like a bad friend you know and i just i'm not gonna get a bitch too much on it but and i'm not gonna come down on her too much she was acting as if, you know, she told her, she was like, you know what, don't even um put that into the atmosphere that he's that type of way. You know, that's wrong, and you don't even need to do that and speak it into existence. And and I agree, you know, because at the end of the day, you haven't caught this man doing anything. He hasn't shown you that he's doing anything, and you don't need to speak that into any existence, like she said. And it's wrong to even put that out on somebody. So, it's just, but basically, you know, I guess she got a reason, you know, to feel that way as if he is cheating. Like she said, you know, I'm not giving him none. You know what I'm saying? And now he's off, you know, saying all this ass and pussy and everything. And maybe he will do something. So, yeah, that's on him and how he goes. And you just got to trust that Lewis is going to be, you know, a stand up guy and do what he got to do. But, yeah, I guess she is nervous because she's not doing what she needs to do as a female. And that's just the fuck it. And y'all. I'm not perfect. She's not perfect. You know, I think as far as Tiffany is concerned, she's building a brand for herself like me, like Sassy. And it takes some work when it comes to the husband, y'all. My husband has been a certain type of way. When I start him, this channel, he has like, he was kind of seeming like he was like, a little distant, a little, you know, feeling like left out. And, you know, he would get quiet when it was time for me to record. And he just, you know, wasn't really trying to, like, uh, uh, express exactly how he feel. Because, you know, it was taking up some of his time. Like, it was serious. And I know how Tiffany feels. But at the end of the day, like, you still got to give back. You got to try to do both. You know what I'm saying? And you, first of all, you got to sit down and have that conversation. And look, this is what it is. This is what I'm trying to do, baby. And it's going to help both of us in the long run. You know what I'm saying? And that's the conversation that I had but these type of conversations need to be had and you can't just be going about your own life and yourself because if you do you might just be end up by yourself and on your own you know what I'm saying you gotta have those conversations because they they are men and they get needy and they want us when they want us but you gotta explain to them this is what I'm doing this is the path that I'm doing and now y'all my husband is so on board you know he sees the almost thousand subscribers he see me work he always see me putting on my wings my clothes coming down here doing all this so he is totally with it and on top of that i explained to him you know what i'm saying this makes me happy you know and happy wife happy life so at the end of the day i'm glad my husband is on board eventually hopefully it, it'll happen with them but that's what melanie was saying now and i'm thinking about it have the conversation with him what is his love language find out you know what makes him happy what turns him on and everything else but i really don't think tiffany gives a fuck i really don't think she even trying to go down that line and um explore any of that i think it's all about her own ass because the way that she was talking just doesn't seem like, you know, she is really on duty as far as being, you know, a wife and trying to make him happy along with her. It just seems like, you know, things are getting real selfish and she's just not wanting to give out and saying, trying to make him stick to what the plan was. Well, we said this is what it was. We said this was, okay, bitch, you can keep saying that, but shit changed. And when it changed, you got to address shit the way that needs to be addressed. And that's what Tiffany is not doing. So the guys visit the strip club, okay? And I'm just like, okay, y'all walking real deep in the club. Up, girl yo what y'all about to go to the vip or something like that like damn y'all so anyway y'all it looked like it was the daytime nobody was in there it was just like this was strictly for videotaping um we don't want no problems and yeah it's just not about to be a crump like you know y'all think it's gonna go so yeah here we go honey this is how it look they up in the like vip area the bitches come out you know they think they doing their little thing on the pole and everything <sighs> Um, yeah, more reasons to yeah, this is just not my type of thing, you know, and but at the same time, his ass over there like, Maurice, you know what, sit the fuck down, because you're doing too much, and you trying to shut, and oh, cool, your goddamn car, that's what they did. Marceau was some of some, um, yeah, I just don't be getting down like this. This is not what, like, he's just making all type of excuses. Y'all just have some fucking fun. That's what y'all do. Have some good fun. Watch the bitches. Get some wings. Get some drinks. You know what I'm saying? And throw some dollars. Make it rain. Do what y'all do and have fun. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be sitting up there acting like you don't want to go to the, even I like going to the strip club, okay? I like to see the bitches. Me and my husband used to go all the time. We don't go no more. We too damn old for this shit. But yeah, y'all, y'all go ahead and have some damn fun. Don't make excuses. The bitches are fun to watch, okay? They are very acrobatic and they know what the fuck they doing, y'all. So anyway, I just wanted them to have fun. Um, Lewis is over there just looking all nervous, looking like he got... One minute he looking nervous, 
Like he trying to smoke a cigar, not even trying to look around. You know what I'm saying? Um, the the other time he just like looking like he in a deep thought process. He's like, bitch, you are around a bunch of naked bitches. You need to have some goddamn fun. And Mark so said he was like, yeah, that man, he got a lot on his mind. He not really with that open relationship shit. I, I can tell you that right now. You know, um, Martell is over there. You know, he the bitches all dancing in front of him. You know, she grinding doing her little thing, and he like, can I take you home? Just flat out ask, can I take you home? I'm like, okay, Martell. You know, Martel was doing too much, and yeah, he he just needs to sit the fuck down somewhere. But you know what? I told my husband the thing about it because we was watching. Y'all know we always watch together. So the fuck, well, let him have his fun. This man has been married. You know, marriage is hard, y'all. It takes a lot. I always talk about this shit, and he just needs to live his life and have fun. You know, that's why when Marcel brought up that shit about you know him needing to um take responsibility for the shit that he did to um melody oh bitch go ahead i was right with marcel bitch go ahead this shit is oh i'm trying to live my best life i don't have time to keep you know rehashing what i did don't nobody want to keep hearing about what the fuck they did wrong he's trying to get out of that hole you know what i'm saying he's trying to recreate himself and everybody needs to have a second chance don't nobody want to keep talking about that bitch and what they did to her because the shit is over y'all let her move on with her goddamn life he can move on with his and Marcel is wrong for even bringing that shit the fuck back up. And Martel let his ass down. He said, nah, man, go ahead with that shit. You know what I'm saying? And Marcel, he ain't have nothing to say after that because it's true, bitch. Don't be rehashing all this shit. You know what I'm saying? People need to have a chance to move on in life. And he don't want to keep hearing about where he fucked up. But you want to keep hearing about where you fucked up at? And you trying to clean up your life? No. So nobody wants to talk about that shit. I was just fucking pissed off when Marcel tried to bring that shit back up. Because I was even like, is he... And my husband was like, yep, like, come on now. You ain't got to bring all that back up. You know, and I guess because he did take a dig on Melanie, you know, he was like, you know, she's um cold-hearted or black-hearted or something like that. So he said that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, okay, that could have been swept under the rug. Like, damn, he's taking enough at this point and it just didn't need to be let go. Anyway, Maurice tells Martel he's proud of him. You know, and the rest of the guys basically did too. Um, yeah, I am basically, I guess, becoming Team Mars Tail because I, I'm just sick of hearing about old ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fucking old. You know, he did have a baby on her. That was wrong. You know, but do we have to keep on trying to drill a man into the fucking ground like man bashing and all this shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's starting to be too much, and, and, and we want to be on a positive note with, with liking to see somebody grow. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, the dumbass don't do the shit again. To the point, like my husband was saying, having a baby on somebody like that is so much. That is so fucked up. And to the highest wrong that you can get. I really do hope that Martel got it when he did that. Like, that was so wrong and so bad. But how many times are we going to try to coach a nigga into what he did and what he needs to do and what he need to be? Man, fuck this, this nigga grown. If he do it again, that's on him and her. You know what I'm saying? But I really don't have no time to keep on bringing up old ass shit. Why you keep bringing up old ass shit? <laughs> Why you keep bringing up all that shit? <laughs> like, that is just fucking stupid and it's annoying. Like, and nobody would want it done to them. Because we've all fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But what let you, when you get up at the crack of dawn, let a motherfucker keep pointing up in your face about how you did wrong and what you did, what you need to do, and what you fucking need to fix. Man, let that shit go, y'all. For real. It's dumb. It's old. And we on a positive note. We got the damn NS, incest. Y'all know that shit sound like incest. His wine, that sound like somebody saying incest. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ew, girl, you need to change that, girl. Okay, I need like, that don't sound good. Anyway, we trying to be on a positive note. Um, move forward with, with, with even us. Like, I don't want to keep being negative about it. Like, let's move on to be positive. Like, let the shit go. You know, so yeah, y'all, I, I just got irritated when Marceau brought that shit up because, bitch, we got other shit to do, other shit to talk about. So y'all, I thought it was funny when, you know, the guys are sitting there trying to tell Maurice that he looked fried. You know what I'm saying? And Maurice is just like sitting there all done with glasses on. Nobody has glasses on, bitches, no sun out. You know what I'm saying? And he tried to hurt and say, I'm not fried. I'm not taking his glasses off. Bitch, you look fried, okay? And we're trying to tell me, bitch, all you need to do is get it together. Then he gonna fucking admit, okay, yeah, well, maybe I did, you know, and I just need to try to uh, fix it before I go home, you know, in a day. Yeah, like, you look fried and we try to tell you. <laughs> and then somebody gonna be, somebody was like, yeah, he's feeling like he's messed up inside, but trying to act like he not. And I'm like, exactly, you think that nobody see that shit? We all know when somebody is fried, admit you're fried. <laughs> Louis and Marceau are teasing um, Martel about, oh, you got another male, another male. 
And you know, he like, yeah. And he was like, yeah. And then uh, Mar uh, Lewis is like, oh yeah, the original male. And Mar Marcel gonna go, oh yeah, not crispy, the original. Not crispy, not spicy, not... not you know what? Uh, you always got fucking jokes. You know, I'm not even gonna say what that original man, you know, because I'm not trying to go there, okay? But bitch, give it up because you do the most all the fucking time. Like, all the fucking time. And just stop. <laughs> just stop because that is not right. <laughs> And Martel is just looking, he said, you know what, well, you are so childish. You just are, you are childish. And he is, he's fucking childish. So Martel lets them know that they're going to um, go to a rage room, you know what I'm saying? And uh, basically, yeah, y'all, this is about um, smashing stuff and uh, releasing everything out, you know? And Maurice was just like, okay, that sounds like the bedroom. I'm like, you know what? And then Martel will go, oh, I'm married. I'm married. Bitch, you know, put your motherfucking hand down because you do too much. Sit down. <laughs> so the rage room, okay, y'all? So they had the rage room, and I'm like, oh, my God, I would love to go here, okay? Y'all, it looks so much fun, y'all. So, yeah, they grabbing bats, um, axes, um, golf clubs. Like, they just grabbing everything because they're going to be busting printers, um, TVs, microwaves, just like all this type of shit and just getting a lot of fucking negative energy out of themselves. I'm like, oh, my God. So Marceau was like, you know what, you go ahead and go first, Martel, because it's your party, you know, it's your party. Martel, y'all, he starts to, like, bang on this printer, and, you know, he was really, like, banging like he was at a golf course. That's what it looked like. It was like, okay, I need you to play golf, you know what I'm saying? My husband played golf, and I know that swing, you know what I'm saying? That's what it was. I was expecting a bang, but he did do the little bang later. Anyway, y'all, Marceau goes next. I'm like, oh, shit. So... Marcel goes, you know what, this is for the bloggers, this is for the posts, all the posts, you know what I'm saying, y'all know all that shit he going through on Instagram and all that shit and Twitter, um, and so he like, yeah, but you know what, this is mostly for Miss Wanda, bam, God, he started banging that goddamn TV, I was like, oh my God, like, he was so fucking pissed off, and I'm with Lewis, like, cause Lewis asked him later, damn, is it that serious, you know what I'm saying, like, but I guess it is, because, he has been trying to express to Tisha and her that I need y'all to stop jumping on the bandwagon with everybody on Instagram. I need to, um, what is it, uh, Miss Wanda to start jumping on the bandwagon with everybody else because now it seems as though Wanda is starting a lot of shit. You know, so he is really pissed at her. And yeah, rightfully so. But y'all, he went crazy on that motherfucking, uh, what was it, a printer, a TV or something. And he was just bang, bang for fucking it up. Oh, that's what it was. It got stuck. And then, next thing you know, he just tossed it up against the wall. I was like, wow. Like, he was really fucking mad. But it was all in fun. He wasn't looking mad to the point, like, he really would fuck her up. Or, like, it was really, like, really a lot of anger. He was playing. They was having so much fun, y'all. Then, y'all, it was Lewis next. Lewis said, I got so much sexual frustration, you know, up in me. And he started, like, banging this damn thing all over the place. Like, he just kept on banging. I'm like, okay, Lewis, um, you can calm down now, okay, honey? Because, she had um, yeah, Tiffany don't need to see you acting like that. You know, she really might not give you no pussy then, okay, honey? Um, yeah, because Lewis was going to bat on that motherfucking TV or whatever it was. He was doing a lot. He would not stop. I was like, damn. Anyway, y'all, um, it was so funny when Maurice was like, you know what? Um, yeah, I don't have no sexual frustration, you know, but this just for my man who got the sexual frustration. And he started banging, bam, 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 bam. Talking about Lewis, and he was giving it up. It seemed like him and Kimmy be getting it in. No guy, yeah. They are newlyweds, and this is how it's supposed to go. It's not supposed to be like how um, Lewis and Tiffany are going through. Yeah, like, I think two or three years in. Why are y'all having sexual issues right now? Like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, I'm telling y'all, me and my husband, like, we did it probably every single day, a couple times a day for, like, ten fucking years, y'all. This shit just started slowing down for us, and it probably was, like, three years ago when it just started slowing down like normal motherfuckers, maybe twice a week. Y'all, but it was every fucking day, maybe two or three times a day for us for, like, a, long, a lot of years. You know, I'm serious, and my son know exactly how that went. Because just the other day, and I, I be like, damn, what, did, what do my kids know? What did they hear? Because, y'all, one time, a real quick story. Um, One time, my daughter caught us, you know, and she was like, um, uh, uh, they in there wrestling. Okay, girl, you know. But no, my son, uh, my oldest, one of my sons, not my oldest son, I got a 22-year-old and a 21-year-old. My 21-year-old son told my daughter the other day, you know, because she was sitting by our room. We had our door closed. She was sitting by our room. 
and um, playing with the dog, playing with Capone. And he was like, look, um, Simone, get from by that door because you don't know what's going on. I said, you know what? Why do you have to say all of that? You can like, get from my mom and daddy door. Girl, but he, what I'm saying, y'all, he know how I go. He know how we go. Like, everybody know how we about to go. Even my family, they all know. But, you know, it has slowed down over the years. But I'm saying, it was like 13 years later. We've been married for 15. It slowed down probably three years later. Two, two years, three years ago, two years ago, something like that. Five, something. But it was on and popping for at least the first 10. Like, for real. So, Tiffany and Lewis having these type of issues, that's just too fast. And that shouldn't really be going on. And they need... Um, but, uh, therapy already? Marriage counseling already? That's too much, girl. You need to go ahead and get this nigga some pussy. But my mother reminded me. Because y'all, I don't know if y'all know, I did not watch, um, last season of Marriage Huntsville. I just didn't. I was over all the, um, cheating with him and Melly. I just couldn't take no more. And I just stopped watching it. My mother was like, basically, she, um, got Lewis to marry her on a football field or something. I did not know that. So, my mother was like, yeah, this bitch forced him to marry her. You know what I'm saying? So, bitch, you wanted it at first. Now, you got the goddamn husband and you, you don't know how to act. You know what I'm saying? Girl, get up, man, some pussy. You doing too fucking much. You don't even take that much, girl. Do something. Okay? Do something. If we got to do it, you got to do it. You need to go and give up some head on top of that. You could at least be doing that. You ain't doing nothing. Like, come on now, you got to do something, but man. He going to be a man sooner or later, and they need to get some help. That's just it. Maurice is telling the guys is that, you know, leave him. Um, yeah, Monster's just not driven enough. He's expressing it. He's really upset about it, and he needs to do something about it. Like, he really looked like he's sitting there in hard thought and, and, and really um have an issue with it and i'm like damn like what, what's going on i thought he was young and he is like marceau or marteau said this nigga only 14 15 some of them yeah um he don't have enough drive uh uh he needs more motivation and um i gotta wake him up in the morning okay i need join the fucking club all your kids are different all my kids are different one you gotta wake up one you don't one of them will stay in the bed as long as you let them the other one gotta get up do what the fuck needs to go on and all that that's just how it is you know and I think he need to let up off his son a little bit. Like, that's just too fucking much. Nobody wants to um, do all of that when they're that age. You know, he said he got this little boy in um, uh, football, two types of football, it sound like. Um, and then uh, something else, but he's in all this stuff and stuff. This nigga probably fucking tired. Like, what are you doing? Like, it just doesn't make sense that he wants his son to be all wrapped up in, you know, his future and knowing what he's going to do in life. Nobody is that serious. And if somebody is that fucking serious at 14 and 15, you better be watching out for when they get in their 20s, their late 20s. Their fucking ass going to be suicidal because don't nobody need to be taken like that damn serious. How he want him to be a, on a straight and narrow that fast. Like, it's just too much. And, and Martel was telling him, man, yeah, pops. Basically, you a daddy. This is what goes on, you know. And Marceau was telling the man, come on now. This nigga is 14. He's 14, 15. He said, he be 15 in another month. Okay, and? Like, he just need to calm down with that. Maurice got his panties in a bunch. And yeah, um, Cammy, I know you can help him out with this and figure out what needs to be, you know, done. But, you know, y'all had the same problem with Jalen. Maurice is getting real frustrated because Jalen didn't want to be an entrepreneur. And he wanted to go to work and try to figure the shit out. Yeah, this is what, you know, is going on with him. He's getting mad now at Monster. So as long as Martel and Marcel continue to tell him, you know, back up off the nigga a little bit, I think eventually he will. And then Kimmy in his ear, like I said, at the same time, he'll change and let up. But, you know, he just needs to try to, you know, let his son live his life. And, and because he's not complaining about anything else. Like, what else is he not doing? You know what I'm saying? He really didn't have any valid complaints. You know, he just said that he's not motivated. And sometimes we are, just what Martel was saying. Some kids are not motivated like that. You can't instill that. That that has to come in them already. But some people, that's already in them. That's instilled in them. And that's just not in him. And you got to roll with the punches. So, y'all, this episode was really, really good. Um, I really, really enjoyed this episode. It was so much going on. We got to know so many new things. And, yeah, I cannot wait till the next episode. So, I will see you, ladies and gents, later for the next episode. Um, I will be reviewing Married to Medicine. And I'm reviewing Basketball Wives. So, yeah, I'm ready for this show to be over. Y'all, I'm over it. But anyway, y'all, I will see you ladies and gents later. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like, okay? Um, yeah, bye.